EMT stands for Emergency Medical Technician. An EMT is someone who is trained to work in the pre-hospital care, equipped with the necessary skills and knowledge. Um, so in Kenya, they go through a nine-month course, about five and a half months in class for knowledge and skill, and two and a half months attachment to a busy ambulance service or hospital. There are three. EMT basic would do basic life support, mm -hmm. and then uh, EMT intermediate mm -hmm. is a combination of life support and a bit of advanced life support. And EMT paramedic would do advanced life support. The first ambulance service I think was uh, in Kenya was probably institutional based. Mm -hmm and that was not responding to pre-hospital care. But in terms of pre-hospital care, we came in in St. John in 1928. For EMTs, we can trace it back to the bomb blast in 1998. Okay. Eh? Previously, we had uh, guys working in the ambulance, ambulance crew. St. John would track cadets. Then as soon as you clear uh, from four, they offer you a job. Then uh, when you go to work in the ambulance, you're taken through a week's course you know, um, ambulance service course. Uh, the most of it was on customer service, you know, how to smile to the patient, <laughs> you know. So, um, come the bomb blast. 98. In 98. Yeah. The US, that's the US Embassy bomb blast. Yes, okay. yes. Um, uh, after everything, like that, there, there was lots of confusion. Um, most of us were really asking ourselves, is this what we want to do? Um, so after the bomb blast, we had uh, the American Embassy sending in someone to come and do um, a needs analysis and just see how um, the EMS response was, you know. And um, uh, the, the person who came was really talking about EMS. We've never heard of EMS. There was no system at all. Uh, there was no ambulance system. Uh, it was bad. Most most of the ambulances we had were private okay. ambulances, and it was more of we are competing for patients, you know. So it really does not matter what kind of patient you're having. So you'd find uh, one ambulance carrying six or seven uh, <laughs> <laughs> patients. Eh? You, as the crew, you have nowhere to sit, you know. <laughs> And that was life at that time, okay. uh, because even in a normal road traffic accident, that is what would happen. Uh, as it happens, an accident occurs, uh, several people call, I'm a member of AR, I'll call AR, you know, someone else would call St. John, uh, someone else City Council, and all the three ambulances would leave, you meet along the highway, uh, you know well that you're going for way. that accident, mm -hmm. you know, and it is more of uh, who will reach there first. So there was really no um, uh, system, you know. Um, but um, when 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 uh, the needs analysis was done, uh, I think they saw uh, and, and, and and they saw the need of of uh, training uh, pre-hospital care providers, and uh, I think in 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 uh, ninety eight September is when we had the first class of EMTs. We started off about 46 uh, EMTs uh, being trained, drawn from St. John, uh, Red Cross Police, the military, all over. So by December, the class was done. It was hard. <laughs> it, was, it was really hard because there was so much to learn, very new things. I think about 40 of us graduated. Eh? Then, um, from there, half of the group actually left. Left to go. <laughs> left and went to the US. They'll, uh, they'll never come back. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. And um, uh, the few of us who remained, I think uh, we were just okay, you know, that now we have learned. The good thing also is that the project equipped some of the ambulances, you know, and also brought 
the different ambulance crew from the different agencies together you know so we would meet at an accident scene and we know you know what is supposed to happen irrespective of which ambulance service you're coming from you know uh, so um we worked well two years down the line uh, we realized that uh, we need to do something you know we need uh, to learn more so again we went back to us aid they are the ones who earlier had sponsored they brought in two instructors now uh, the project was much much bigger um, so two instructors were brought in uh, and and, and um, the smaller group that we were did uh, a refresher course went through an instructor's course um, emergency medical services instructor's course and uh, we now helped to train new EMTs. That was, I think, in 2000, 2000, 2000, between 2000 and 2002. You know? So we were able to train about 112 between Nairobi and Mombasa. And uh, I think that was where now people saw the need of driving now things hard, you know. <laughs> Um, because now we said we shall not go back to US aid. We have to do things ourselves, you know. And uh, I think that is when uh, KCMT was born, uh, KCMT. Kenya, Kenya Council of Emergency Medical Team. Because we said now this one, uh, we need someone to engage the government. Yes, I think around 2006, Kenya Council of EMT was officially registered. So from 2006, I think around 2007 and 8 there, we, we, we were able to um, have several sessions, went through the EMT curriculum, mm -hmm. made sure that uh, we now had Kenyan scenarios, uh, just to Kenyanize that curriculum 99%. You know? um, and we were happy that uh, we now, immediately after that, we had the first uh, EMT class. When was this? That was in uh, 2000 and, uh, 2008. Uh, 2008. Okay. Uh, at um, AR. Uh, and uh, since then, the number has been growing. Um, the agencies that are training EMTs has also been uh, growing. Okay. At the moment, we have 642. 642, that's a lot. 642, okay. but of the 642, only um, as by March of uh, this year, only 216 are active. The day starts very, very early start from 6 a.m. when they report on duty is just finding out what is the planned activity so which vehicle which team and then the vehicle preparation in terms of the vehicle itself mechanically sound is there fuel um, are the equipment inside are they working if somebody is going to work into the ambulance then now we'll go to the location where they are supposed to stand by or they wait at the base so uh, you respond depending on the case you manage the case you take to hospital the shift ends at officially at eight but most of the emts are here up to nine or ten if you come from a call whereby um, the vehicle is really soiled so it has to be washed everything has to be stripped off that takes time EMTs mostly fit into the ambulances or work at the A&D so that when the call comes, you jump into the ambulance, respond and come back. Conducting resuscitations, loading patients or offloading patients from the vehicles, dressing of, of, of wounds, stabilizing uh, fractures, started way back in uh, 
Form 1. Mm -hmm. so, I, I, I in went, secondary school. In secondary yes. school, mm -hmm. uh, where I went to a school that had uh, a St. John club. And I uh, started going for the meetings, uh, competitions, uh, public duties, you know, training. I think from there on it just, it was there. I think the first time I reported to work in the ambulance yes. uh, is probably the day when you, you, you're really asking, do I want to do it, you know? I think we had a death on that day, we had a lady who was giving birth on that day. We, we had already seen a lady giving birth in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> we had never seen the live one. <laughs> never, you know. Uh, so it was it was a bad day, mm -hmm. a very bad day. We were dirty, you know, <laughs> with uh, all the blood from the lady. By the time evening was reaching, yeah, we were worn out, finished, and uh, I think for two days I didn't report because I had said no. <laughs> and uh, actually went two days I uh, uh, went back and I think that is from there on it's been straight forward yes. yes the first day was terrifying because um, my first call was actually a delivered luckily the driver I remember his name Bobby was quite uh, experienced uh, with my little experience as a first day I have never seen this before so I, I, I just shouted, Bobby, I need you here. <laughs> and, and luckily, uh, he helped me through the process because he had done it before. And, and uh, it was quite horrifying, but I think I was lucky just to have that guy there. That adrenaline itself eh, uh, makes you not think so much, you know, of what is going on. You, you you actually believe it's only you on that road. <laughs> uh, then you're thinking of what are you going to find there, you know? Um, so lots of sweating, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> lots of adrenaline, I'd say. You have to try and create space. You have to try and work with other drivers to find your way uh, through. And the occasions that you'd actually have the siren um, and probably decide to just switch it off because um, it doesn't matter how loud you are, you're not going to get them and nobody's going to get out of the way because of the narrow roads that we have and as you get more experienced uh, and get to understand the dynamics and everybody else on the road, um, it helps. Um, from a mostly from Friday through to Saturday afternoon, most of the calls are road traffic accidents. Though also issues of uh, gunshot wounds, you know that um, in, 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 in a week, you'll obviously go for one. Medical is mostly transfers, but medical, medical conditions that happen from home, in Kenya here mostly something to do with uh, diabetes, or hypertension or um, abdominal pains yeah and for children it's mostly fever or cough or asthmatic attack is very common first thing you want to do is to do an assessment you're bound to get there 20 or 30 minutes late um, to an emergency uh, there will be a lot of pressure that is coming from the people who are in the scene because they want you to get in and start assisting the patient Dependent on the case, you um, most of the time find yourself doing the basics um, at the scene. Then transfer the patient into the ambulance and um, do your continuous assessment and management in the ambulance. It was late evening, uh, I remember there was a building collapse in the Makasi, that was three years ago, and uh, there were so many and uh, the public were pulling them off the debris, placing them somewhere. The bleedings were not arrested, and the conditions were getting worse and worse. It was actually chaotic, so there was no proper coordination, so making compromising actually the situation. Three or 
four in the last <coughs> three months. And uh, one was a, a lady crossing the road, and uh, in the middle of the road there was another vehicle that was coming, so she stepped back. On stepping back, we were a big lorry behind her. So we picked her very fast, rushing to hospital, but unfortunately, we did our best. Mm -hmm. She did not make it. I listened to music and called my wife. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I told her, I lost her best. But she has always been using these words. You did your best, it was not your fault. Mm -hmm. And that one gives me. It's true, actually. And also sharing with my colleagues when we motivate one another to do some more. Because we also get an encouragement from one another. We lost one, but we saved a thousand. So it keeps us going. And avoiding counseling is, 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 is a normal practice mm -hmm. nowadays. I must say there's been some significant change. Initially, you would get to the scene of the incident, and chances are they will get the patient into the ambulance before it stops. <laughs> However, right now I think there's a good understanding. They will wait for you to come and tell them. Kenyans need to understand the role of ambulance. Kenyans need to see that they, if the ambulance could be carrying their sister, it could be them, it could be their mother, it could be their relation or their friend in that ambulance. Expensive is relative. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the cost is justified. An ambulance is supposed to be a public service. An ambulance is not supposed to be private. Even if it is private, then it, it has to be subsidized for citizens. I think the average cost now is about 6,000 shillings. Throughout Nairobi, Thika, a member of public will tell you with this 6,000 I'll go pay for a registration card in the hospital, pay uh, for the doctor to see the patient, and buy medicine. Now you want me to pay the ambulance, then what do I pay in the hospital? We assisted a lady um, um, deliver a child in the ambulance and the lady uh, disappears. <laughs> <laughs> we spent a whole day looking for the mother. We went to the police, the police said no. Where do you want us to go? Do you want us to lock the baby in the cell? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, uh, the baby is there crying, so we had to buy milk. <laughs> Not formula, but milk, milk, you know? Uh, switch on the vehicle heater, <laughs> place the milk there, so that it heats it a bit. Um, it was a bad day. Very bad day. I think we ended up uh, handing over the baby to some home in uh, Dagoretti at around 9 p.m. at night from 6.30 in the morning. When the public does not appreciate what we do, okay. and, uh, or, or sometimes maybe uh, a patient is sick at home, or something has happened, and then they took too long to call. When we come, they feel it's like it's us that has taken too long to come. So they say, if you would have come earlier, this would not have happened. See, so it, uh, it is actually Challenge. Of course, there's, 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 there's the obvious frustration that uh, um, there's an important link that we expect to be there and, and, and not all players are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, you would imagine that the new constitution had the right intentions of, of, of saying that everyone has the right to emergency medical care. Um, however, when um, we do not have movement in terms of policy, we do not have movement in terms of uh, investment by the government to ensure that uh, that gap that existed um, from that time that patient uh, is in that emergency situation and the time that they receive advanced care, then it becomes frustrating. It's safer right now to be an EMT. Again, the fact that the EMTs are trained and part of the training is to actually get them through the dynamics of our incidences, what to expect from the public and the kind of incidences that they are going to, to face. The rule is that if it's not safe, you don't get in. Uh, if you die, then you don't save lives. So I think through, through proper training, yeah, um, lives have been, 
have been saved a lot. I was actually going to work in the morning and, and, and I saw a road accident that occurred um, and I parked my car on the side. This was uh, on Amitika Road and there were people who were surrounding the patient and didn't know what to do and all that. One of the immediate things is when I was doing my assessment, I realized that the guy had, uh, the tag had actually flipped back. Uh, I realized I had to find a way of opening the mouth and pulling it out and then trying to feed the air. And as soon as I did that, there was a significant change in the breathing of this patient. And I think if I had not been there sooner, this guy would have died. Well, uh, EMT is relatively new still in Kenya, and uh, other medical practitioners do not really appreciate EMT because uh, once we go to hospital and uh, the nurse she was saying, uh, "You are not supposed to do this. You should watch as we do it," <laughs> and she wasn't even keen to know how much of a training we had in patient support. So, uh, relatively still new, and a number of people do not really know. But uh, it's coming up, so uh, soon we'll be at par with the rest of the world. The feeling of uh, managing a scene that was quite chaotic and you leave the patient in hospital. And one day you meet the patient walking, you know, uh, feels better. Personally, I would call it. <laughs> I think it's it's very very nice that the management of patients be done professionally. The future is very bright for EMTs. If the government is going to recognize EMTs, uh, at least identify a regulator, and then empower and um, have EMTs recognized by the government and have placement for them, then EMTs will go very, very far. The ambulance organizations nowadays want to employ EMTs. Uh, other hospitals are also looking for EMTs working under A&D. We are picking up the patients that are coming in the cities, especially, let's say, Nairobi. But in Kenya, generally, we are really at a low stage. Unless we can find sustainable models, then it's very likely you will always be seeing new players coming in and getting out. I think also with the legislation in place, there will be a lot that has happened in the next five years. I think what I'm also proud of is the fact that we are just able to be out there to save lives. And we can actually attest that we really have saved quite a number of lives and uh, patients will be then called upon to actually justify all that. Um, also the fact that we have a dedicated team that uh, is willing, they, they are just willing to be out there on a daily basis saving lives.